Hi, I'm Christiana Gunners. I've got three paintings that I want to compare and contrast because they seem to work together and they are what contemporary artists are doing now. The first is Don Lee Ledger's Hundred Year Bloom. Uh, it's the largest one in his series. Uh, and it's something like uh, 8 by 20 feet or something in four panels. And it was painted after he visited the super bloom in the deserts of California and Arizona. Those who know Lee Ledger's work know he does a lot of squares and uh, uh, dividing up his canvases into still life segments. So this is very different. Um, but he was a student of uh, plant ecology before he was a painter. And he was also a student of natural history. So this is organic subject matter for him. He began to paint what he saw, what, what he experienced really when he was uh, in the desert and it's quite rare to have the super bloom all sorts of insects and creatures come out that weren't there before and uh, it, there's, there's a lot of plain jouissance and love of life that's showing here unfortunately when he painted, it was the last year of his life at about 2018, he, uh, he was suffering from a brain tumor. And so he was actually painting this while he was sick. And uh, couldn't really work on it all the time. But his wife, Cora, uh, who was also his collaborator much of their uh, painting life. Um, she said this finally, Don came out of himself when he was painting this. He was finally himself. Don was Don, finally, she said. Uh, the painting premiered actually at the Surrey Art Gallery in 2020 in a show Counting the Steps to the Sun. And when I look at it, I see uh, a desire to live. There are all kinds of shapes, forms, color combinations, all teeming with life in there, even a old skeleton. I see a bit of a blue sky up in the corner indicating there is some sense of a horizon. There's some sense of reaching out towards the outer space as if you're coming out of the ground and you have a light coming in from somewhere and other portions of the paintings are dark. So the contrast is there, the reaching out is there, the reaching for transcendence perhaps amidst the exuberance. The second painting is uh, by David Hockney, and it is in the National Gallery of Australia. This one is in 60 canvases, and it is um, the Grand Canyon, of course. Uh, Hockney went to the Grand Canyon uh, in 1980. Two, and he took a whole lot of photographs 
and he, he came back in 1986 and he created a collage of about 60 photographs of the Grand Canyon since it's hard to take it all in in one go. And uh, 10 years later he came back and started working on the painting which um, was finished in 1998. Um, he wanted to see the Grand Canyon from multiple viewpoints at a time so this is actually more like uh, cubist influence where you have several viewpoints within the same uh, work but he says this is about space uh, he also says this is uh, reaching towards Chinese scroll painting which does the same thing with time that cubism does with the viewpoints there are different time sequences and time elements uh, that combine to form the whole. Now, uh, Hockney was influenced by design sets for opera. You have a very dramatic element here. And the uh, whole idea of the vanishing point, and this painting has multiple vanishing points. He said he had a need for space when he was uh, uh, coming from uh, his native Great Britain to California. And when he went to the Grand Canyon, he was trying to uh, deal with a sense of claustrophobia. Not only does it reach into uh, Cubism, but also into a kind of English Romanticism. So it's influenced by the theater as well as a dream. This is presenting the Grand Canyon without any human intrusion. And it is very much like a dream with the golds and crimsons, scarlets, oranges, ochres, browns. And there is a horizon line way up top just to indicate that there is a horizon and that this is more like an alien landscape. It's like we're on some other planet. So it's a reaching out of the Great Canyon into a horizon above, just like Don Lee Ledger. There is an exuberance here, which is hard to express. The third painting is Gordon Appleby Smith. He's the, uh, another Canadian uh, Vancouver area painter. Um, and this is a six by 20, roughly in size. It's called uh, West Coast Landscape. Uh, it was painted in 2011, nine years before his death. It was actually painted for the Surrey City Central Library and is part of the Civic Collection of Surrey. It's one of Smith's largest paintings. And you can see that from a distance, it's like a landscape or rather a forest scape. But when you come up close, it's quite abstract and uh, painterly. There is a passionate perspective of nature, detailed as a dense of textural mesh of variable lines and modulated colors. There are colors in there. You just don't see it. It looks monochrome. And um, it's really about how we see nature. That when we're, it's different when we're up close, it's different when we're far away. Its nature is a tangled and intricate complexity. 
uh, it's interesting to note that Gordon Smith during the war was an intelligence officer who made uh, topographical ratings on maps including those that guided his comrades as they landed on the beaches of Sicily. So this painting, it does, it is composed of lines, it is a kind of map, it is a kind of attempt to identify a way to go, otherwise it's almost impossible to identify where exactly you should go. It shuts out the horizon line completely, so we're more or less enclosed, but there is the sense of a guide, of a map, reaching. Not so much reaching for transcendence, like uh, in uh, Don Lee Ledger painting, or, uh, or expanse, like in Hockney, but more like reaching for a way to go, for direction, while somehow wrapping yourself in the winter scene that you are in. This painting is all about line. Gordon Smith is or was a Canadian Western modernist, and he continually grappled with representation versus abstraction. And all three painters, I think, are hovering in between those two in a way that is actually comfortable. They're representational, they're abstract at the same time. Thanks for looking at these paintings. I think they are three great paintings of our era.